In this episode, I interview Skylar Macamellis. We discuss how she got into Dynamics as a grad working for Microsoft in their Dynamics 365 support team. I hope you enjoy listening to this episode as much as I enjoy chatting with her. This is the Dynamics 365 show, focusing on the ingredients of a successful Dynamics 365 practice. Your host is business solution MVP, Mark Smith, otherwise known as NZ365Guy. I love engaging with the Microsoft business application community, so send me a message on Twitter or LinkedIn by searching for NZ365Guy. To review the show notes for this episode, please go to nz365guy.com forward slash 21. I would like to thank the generous contribution from our sponsor, Kingsway Soft. Kingsway Soft is a leading integration solution provider, offering software solutions that make data integration affordable and painlessly easy. Thousands of enterprise clients from over 70 countries and regions rely on Kingsway Soft to integrate data with various business systems in order to drive their business efficiency and fully leverage their information assets. KWS is a leading provider of Microsoft Dynamics integration software, including Dynamics 365, CRM, AX, NAV, GP, SL, as well as many other applications. Check out their version six release of the SSIS prod featuring seven new components, including support for Azure Blob Storage, Google Sheets, and new Data Profiler Transformation component. Hi everyone, I'm here with Skylar Macromellis, and in this episode we'll be exploring her career from starting as a grad to becoming a Dynamics 365 consultant with a focus on digital transformation. Skylar started her career as a Microsoft college hire and went from not knowing anything about CRM to serving as a trusted technical CRM resource to Fortune 500 companies within a matter of months. She then took a leap and went independent for some personal and professional exploration, but couldn't stay away from the Microsoft cloud space. Skylar helps clients get the most of their existing systems while translating functional requirements into technical solutions to streamline clients' business processes and making digital transformation happen. She's worked with Dynamics CRM version 4.0 through to Dynamics 365 9.0. Skylar, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for having me, Mark. Okay, so it's great to uh, have you on the show and really get to know a bit a bit more about you. One of my passions has always been seeing grads or people, you know, start their careers and get involved in Dynamics. It wasn't my path, but I've uh, enabled various people across my career to take that path also. So can you tell us a bit about yourself, not just the professional side, but about your life as well? Sure. So as you mentioned, I'm a Dynamics Functional Consultant, but I'm also a certified yoga instructor and a traveler. This past year, I actually was in Southeast Asia for four months backpacking and teaching yoga. And I also love to hike, climb, and food is pretty great too. Wow, wow. So what got you into yoga, first of all? I actually have been practicing for about a decade and I started because I had a stroke and it was, yeah, so it was actually recommended to me by a physical therapist and I went from not really having any balance to where I couldn't really walk to, well, now I'm teaching it. (laughs) Wow. Incredible. Incredible. So how long have you been teaching yoga? I've only been teaching for a couple of years. I started when I was working at Microsoft funny, it was almost like taking another job to decompress from the first job, although it was teaching yoga. So it's probably not like a job. Wow, cool. Okay, so tell us a bit about your journey getting involved in Dynamics, you know, starting off as a grad, uh, really interested in that process. 100% luck, at least for getting placed in Dynamics. So I didn't even want to apply to Microsoft when I was in college. I was actually pushed to by a mentor. And if it hadn't been for his persistence, I wouldn't have applied at all. Fast forward to after the interview process and I got my offer, I still didn't know what team I would be joining. And I didn't know what a support engineer was at all. (laughs) (laughs) So I actually didn't know I would be joining the Dynamics team until after I had onboarded and started training. And even then, I didn't know what CRM was. Wow. Okay, so let me get this right. You took the role as a support engineer. You didn't even know that you were specifically going to be supporting Dynamics. They were going to train you through that process, I take it. They sure did. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
Okay, so you're onboarded, you started in Dynamics, and then what, so what was your kind of training onboarding experience like to get you up to speed to become that support role? So there was some death by PowerPoint involved, but a lot of it was just diving in and taking cases with the help of peers. So I had a couple of weeks where I would run through similar to the trainings on the MBS partner site. Although of course we, I was lucky in that I was based out of Fargo and that's where so many of the CRM resources are based. So I was, I was very lucky to have the support. And in a matter of weeks, I was taking premier cases and I would have someone sitting next to me and helping me, but they just kind of push you into the deep end and you adapt. Yeah. So that onboarding process, are you taken through, Hey, we're going to, you're going to support this product called Dynamics a CRM and here's all the, you know, top 20 questions type thing. You know, what, what was that process to get you from zero knowledge that this product even existed to get you fully, fully onboarded? Was it only PowerPoints? Was there any kind of structure around, you know, training you in that process? We would spin up trial instances and then break them ourselves. And then we would try and get them to function again. We would also shadow the other support engineers and take a look at what they were doing. Granted, this was concurrent with learning what CRM was. So you don't even really know what area of the product you're going to be supporting either. You just kind of start off taking the online cases. Um, at the time, there were still a lot of on-premise customers, and some of them would be submitting tickets to the data center to take a backup, et cetera. And then you move on to more technical cases. If you had a computer science background, you would start off supporting the SDK pod. And for myself, I actually just happened to take a lot of Outlook cases. And then suddenly I was only taking Outlook cases and server-side <laughs> sync, and that was my specialty. Wow. I bet you're, uh, you've had a lot of calls then on that particular uh, that particular integration <laughs> between dynamics. Oh, yeah. And then once someone finds out that you did that, then you are forever the email person. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's so interesting. So outside of Dynamics, what other career options have interested you? You obviously took a time off for travel. Tell us a bit about that. So you could simplify it and say that I have followed the millennial stereotype and quit my corporate job to become a yoga teacher abroad. <laughs> um, it's not that simple. I felt that I needed to have some time for some personal development Professionally, everything was great, but I just didn't feel as connected to what I was doing. Maybe it was an existential crisis of staring at screens, but I actually took the plunge and I left Microsoft to go backpacking. Granted, after I uh, turned in my workstation, I almost had a panic attack. I was like, I just left this job to teach yoga abroad. And I didn't even have any teaching gigs um, set up at the time. But then it worked out. And before you knew it, I was teaching at a yoga center in India. I got to see the Dalai Lama speak. Wow. Yeah. And that was, and that in itself made, made it all worth it. Mm, I bet. I bet. It's interesting. I've just spent the last year traveling the world myself. I took a year off and quit my job. And I tell you, it's been the most absolutely refreshing and refocusing time of my life. And, you know, I'm a little older than you, but I don't think you're really ever too old to, to you know, take that experience outside your current work environment, just see another whole perspective of the world. Definitely. Mm, okay, so let's move along into your role in the dynamics practice. So more, you know, fast forwarding to now, you've, you've had your time away. What roles have you basically filled uh, across your Dynamics career outside of that support role? So after working in support at Microsoft, during my travels, I did take on some independent CRM contracts. If you have CRM on your LinkedIn, recruiters are going to come after you, which is great because it's how I supported myself traveling. But those would range from writing a simple JavaScript function 
because the client needed something a bit beyond out-of-the-box functionality. It wasn't quite business process consulting, but little engagements like that enabled me to be a bit more customer facing, even though I was remote and it transitioned nicely into uh, my current role as a functional consultant with a partner. Mm, Okay. Okay. So how long have you been in that functional consultant role? It's only been six months. Okay. Not too bad. Not too bad. So what do you see as the core skills that you needed to develop for moving into that functional consultant role? More than anything else, adaptability. I mean, I've only been in this space for the past couple of years, but the industry is moving like 500 miles an hour and you have to keep up. (laughs) Yeah, but what else? Maybe it's not true for everyone, but as a young woman in this industry, and I also happen to look and sound a bit younger than I am, what I've learned that is I just have to stand my ground don't be afraid to speak up, even if you are the only associate level consultant in the room and everyone else is senior level or architects. If you act like an intern, you'll be treated like one. Yeah, so true. It's a, it's a, it's a good perspective to have. I know a, a lot of, I have a lot of female colleagues across the world in Dynamics, and they've all learned to really assert their voice, you know, no matter what level within the organization to get that cut through that's needed. Definitely. And it translates to any area of your life, really. Yeah. Yeah. Great. So what systems have you implemented? Tell us a bit about your functional consultant. What kind of, uh, what type of dynamics systems have you implemented for customers just at a high level? So I work with Dynamics Customer Engagement, uh, formerly CRM. What's interesting is that none of my current clients are actually using I still call it CRM, as a CRM. (laughs) So my current projects, I'm uh, leveraging the functionality of universal resource scheduling. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm actually transitioning into field service. Ah, very good. Very good. So it's a big growth area. Definitely. Can you walk me through a typical customer engagement end to end, if you like, from your perspective, how you get involved or what point you engage and then at what point you disengage from a project? Yeah, so as far as a typical customer engagement, at least in my limited time as a functional consultant, there really isn't one. I mean, why else would this be so customizable? But as far as the actual process goes, I am not involved in any pre-sales work. I come in after the SOW is signed. My first engagement with the customer is usually at the discovery sessions. So requirements gathering, creating the fit gap list, documenting, and it's actually the hardest part, I feel, of that process. I mean, once the discovery has been done properly, then the rest should be more straightforward, assuming it's a straight configuration. Yeah. So tell me a bit about the tools that you use for discovery. You know, I've come across, you know, many different organizations use different methods to, if you like, uncover what the customer is wanting to achieve and then what you're ultimately going to configure or customize into the platform? What are some of the tools that you've found effective to getting those ideas out of the customer's head or the subject matter expert's head and into the the document that you're going to use to build against? Step one will always be Bing. (laughs) Bing is my go-to tool from the start. Just get some basic research together as far as what the current business is doing. And then from there, OneNote is my best friend. I actually once left an organization because they would not allow OneNote <laughs> on, the, on the workstations. And then from there, I'm good with the basics, really. So other than a quick search engine being to see what the client actually does, jotting down some notes on my OneNote, which is my best friend. And then from there, it's a lot of spreadsheets. I like to get the entire configuration laid out in an Excel. And if I need to do some diagramming, I'll use a pen and paper because Visio is not my friend. Yeah. (laughs) So, so how, you know, what type of questioning techniques do you use with your customer then to drill into what their current processes are or, you know, what is their as is and what is their to be state? And then what is the delta between those and what you're going to implement? What type of questioning techniques do you use with the, with the customer? So I'll start at the highest level first. And then from there, it's filling in the gaps and 
trying to narrow it down from a linear process to how can I envision this as entities and eventually fields. Mm -hmm. So how do you personally then keep up with the changes that you're seeing in the Dynamics platform? You know, you talked about Microsoft's releasing a massive amount of new, if you like, functionality. The platform architecture has changed dramatically in the last year and a half. How do you keep abreast of these changes so you can, you know, consult effectively with your customers? I am very fortunate in that starting my career at Microsoft has given me such a good network of Dynamics professionals. And they are my most valuable tool to keeping up with the changes. My closest friends are actually also involved in Dynamics. So we keep each other in the loop through group emails. And the millennial part of me will also say, even just scrolling through my LinkedIn, I don't feel like I ever miss anything. Yeah, so true. So true. Very good. Very good. And very uh, unique way of, you know, having that connection with Microsoft beforehand is giving you some, you know, unique access, I bet. Uh, two resources. So when you're back as a support engineer with Microsoft, what was a typical support? Well, you know, you talked about Outlook, but what were the typical type of crests? Were there kind of like there's only 20 things that people would ever come up with that were failing and therefore you had these 20, you know, ways of responding or were they absolutely um, from all over the sphere of uh, questions coming in or was there kind of some standardization to them? So back when I started, they actually did not divide up the support teams by support topics just yet. So in a given day, I could get a ticket ranging from how do I import this solution to this ADFS authentication is completely broken. There really was no normal in Microsoft Premier Support you could get a simple how-to that could be answered with a quick link to some documentations to all of a sudden I have this bug with authentication that's going to take 150 hours to solve. But then at the same time, you have a critical situation in that exchange is blocking CRM from sending out any emails or whatnot. So with those complex issues, at which point did you, what was your trigger, if you like, to escalate to a higher level of support? So I took pro escalation. So I was that person for certain contracts. As far as premier cases go, it would actually depend upon the bandwidth of the rest of the team. So For political reasons, even if I knew how to resolve a case, but they wanted to hear from someone more senior, sometimes that would need to get kicked over. Now, if there was this other issue that I could not for the life of me resolve, sometimes I would still have to hang on to it until there was bandwidth for someone else to help me. Yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. So you mentioned before about somebody encouraging into this field, and I'd like to understand a bit more about you know, whether you've had coaches or mentors that have impacted your Dynamics career. Can you share a bit about that? I really have mentors slash coaches to thank for my career. I mentioned that my mentor in college pushed me to apply at Microsoft. When I was contemplating leaving Microsoft, I had a great network of mentors that, you know, they gave me the pros and the cons. And when it was time to find a role with a partner, they helped me through it as well. So it coaching and mentoring, it's invaluable for any professional, I feel. Yeah, excellent. Tell me, what advice would you give grads considering a career in dynamics specifically? Do's, don'ts, training, focus, that type of thing. First off, accept that you will never know everything. This product is just, it's vast. You're not going to be an expert, but don't feel pressured to be an expert or to know everything all the time. And don't wait to be ready or you never will be ready. So for actionable advice, I would say still try your best and keep up to speed and build your network and study. Those are my top two, having that network and self-study. And so... Is there any particular degree you think favors tech or dynamics specifically than others? That's a very interesting question because the other college hires that I got hired with and were sent to dynamics, we all had different degrees. Wow. Yeah. 
So having said that, I majored in IT, but what I think would have been maybe more applicable to what I'm doing now might have been LIS or something business. I don't think I ever really use <laughs> the advanced networking, or although it did come in handy when I worked support. Yeah. Wow, that's so cool. That's so cool. It's as in, it's some interesting insights there. So let's move on to the product a bit there. What are your three favorite features in Dynamics and why? Well, just today I was playing around with multi-select option sets. And my current project, I probably configured about 30 of them just today. <laughs> so that is at the top of my head. Yeah, good effort. Thanks. I'm also very impressed with how far the app for Outlook has come. I can now get it to deploy, which is so exciting. <laughs> and I'm excited to see where it's going. Nice, nice. So what three things would you like the product team to add to make Dynamics better? What do you think just needs some polish or is entirely missing? Save and publish button. Mm, whereabouts? Down. As in on, a, on a, an entity or are you talking about oh. on, you know... I like that. Save, oh, yeah, save and close and that type of thing used to be around, you know, back in the day. But you're talking about save and publish when doing a configuration in the system? Yes, just an all-in-one button would be fantastic. And then to also have a publish button on the ribbon itself. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Good, good, good. So what's your view of the broader Microsoft business applications? So, you know, let's say, what are you looking at from a Microsoft Flow, Power Apps, Common Data Services, Power BI, Financial Operations, Talent, Retail Field, Service. Where do you where do you see you focusing in the future, and uh, how much of these different toolings, if you like, have you uh, got experience on? Well, what's interesting is I passed the latest exams, and I got my my MCSE not in Dynamics, but in Business Applications, which tells me that it really is all just going to be cohesive. And 100%. that yeah, mm-hmm. we're all going to have to know them. Power apps is a must. Field service, I'm actually ramping up on right now. And I'm super excited to have a project with field service. I'd love to get my hands dirty with the IoT integration. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, there's some incredible investments being done in that part of the solution. And it's a, a massive and enabler for so many organizations. So anything else you'd like to add about your career thus far or a recommendation to perhaps people listening? Well, for books, I would recommend anything Tim Ferriss. His tribe of mentors is sitting on my coffee table right now. You'll read a blurb from someone you would normally never even dream of reading an interview on. And I particularly love that he asks everyone their advice on how to say no to people, which is so hard to learn. Yep. Any others? Do you uh, listen to any uh, or read any blogs in particular that you would go to often? I actually love Neil Parker's CRM blog. It actually helped me prepare for my certifications. Nice. So what's your favorite mobile app and why? Or which one do you use the most and why? Well, I live in Los Angeles, so I am always using Waze and it definitely works. <laughs> And for productivity, I've been experimenting lately with Pomodoro Keeper. Yeah, so it's this technique for productivity. You set this timer for 25 minutes, and then you just keep working until it rings. And then when it rings, you set it again, and you keep working. But then when it rings again, then you can just take a break. If you think of something else that you have to do in the middle of that 25 minute set, I just write it on sticky to get to it later. And not only is this great to just get things done, but helps me keep track of my billable time. Yeah, excellent. It might come as a surprise to you, but I'm partway through a second time slot on Pomodoro right now running on my phone. I've actually been (laughs) using it for the last week and I've found it has created a massive productivity boost for me. In fact, I was just reading the other day about a a Kickstarter project where a guy created a kind of like an hourglass based on the 25 minute process. And uh, I'm looking to get me one of those for my desk. So if you're like a low tech, but very functional, aesthetically pleasing, in fact, very Zen-like method of actually following this technique. So I'm looking forward to getting uh, one of those. Tell me about your favorite way to unwind after a stressful day always going to be some sort of a physical activity. Not necessarily yoga. Yoga is 
morning routine for me. But um, I'll either go to the gym, go for a hike, run. I like to reassure myself that there's life away from the screen. I did start bouldering a couple months ago because a bouldering gym opened up a few blocks from me. And it's great because not only do I have to walk there, so I'm getting outside, but just walking into the gym, climbing, walking back, the whole process is just super grounding, clears my head, allows me to both concentrate, but also decompress. And uh, the social aspect is great too. Awesome. Awesome. So how do you stay productive outside of Pomodoro and getting things done? How else do you stay productive? By allowing myself room for my other passions outside of dynamics. So it's preventative. I have my morning routine that's going to have a yoga practice, some moments of silence, and then some coffee and a bit of some light reading. I feel when I'm fulfilled in my life outside of dynamics projects, the time that I do spend on those projects is more productive. Yeah, excellent, excellent, good balance. So can you tell me one career highlight that really stands out for you? So at Microsoft, I did have this awesome opportunity to volunteer for DigiGirls. And it's a program that gives young girls a chance to explore what a career in technology might be like. And it's so important because representation can never be taken for granted. In fact, when I joined Microsoft for the longest time, and okay, this is a little digression, but it's also a career highlight. I refused to add a profile picture to my Skype for Business because I wanted to take advantage of the fact that I have a unisex name. I didn't want people to know that I was a woman. And then I thought that if I showed people what I looked like, then I wouldn't be taken seriously. And I was eventually talked out of that. And I realized, you know, when I showed my picture, nothing terrible happened to me. But just the fact that that fear was there and getting young girls into tech is crucial. Yep. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I totally agree. It's a, it's a hot topic for me. It's something that I've been really doing a lot of research myself over the past year and really looking at unconscious bias, you know, in the workplace and well, not just the workplace in life in general. And I was even listening to a podcast earlier today and was surprised how gender was used to differentiate job roles. And the guys justified it in this podcast that, well, that's just the way it is. And I was like, wow. And my wife and I had quite a discussion around this, that, you know, until those kind of biases change, it changes, it makes it very difficult, you know, to make, you know, technology more approachable to, as you say, girls, ladies coming into the industry, or considering it as a career option, even unless, you know, some of these biases need to be addressed often and more often all the time very well said mark awesome thank you so much it's been great talking to you this has been the dynamics 365 show focusing on the ingredients of a successful dynamics 365 practice your host was business solution mvp mark smith otherwise known as nz365 guy For more information on this episode, show notes, feedbacks, and resources mentioned, or if you want to know someone that would be a great guest for future episodes, please go to nz365guide.com forward slash 21. If you want to hear more great podcasts, please subscribe to NZ365Guy on your favorite podcast app.